Hey people, hope you're well. So back in February, I got myself a SpaceX Starlink satellite internet dish. I'd been struggling for years with a four meg broadband connection and running, working from home, running a software company, not easy with that kind of speed. So I was pretty excited when SpaceX announced the Starlink and stuck myself on the waiting list. When I received the dish, I wanted to share with you the unboxing and the connections so that I could share what kind of connection I could get. I'm in the middle of the countryside here in Shropshire, UK, and I wanted to share what kind of speeds it might give me. Now, that was eight months ago, and I've had quite a few people that saw my first video ask, well, how am I doing? It's been a while. It settled in. What's my experience? So I wanted to make this video to share with you my experience of the dish. When I first connected the dish, when I made that video, I just put the dish out on the lounger outside in the garden. But it turned out to be quite intermittent. Every now and then the connection would just drop. It would come straight back, but not good with Zoom calls, that kind of thing. Once I got the electricians around and put the dish on the roof, the connection and its reliability improved considerably. So all good in that front. Now, that's not the end of the story. There are a couple of things that I've discovered over the months that I think it's really useful to share. So for those of you that are interested in getting the dish, short story, great, but there are a couple of things that might mean it might not be the solution for everyone. So I'm gonna cover those. First of all, speeds. So as you remember from the other video, the connection I got was crazy fast straight away. That's kind of settled down. What I've noticed is two things. First of all, if I'm doing a speed test with the Starlink speed analyzer, the speed that it shows is very, 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 it's all over the place. It can, it can show 30 meg, then 50 meg, then 100 meg, then 200 meg, then 250 meg. And, and all within seconds, I can just run it straight away over and over. If I use the Okra speed test, things are much more stable. I generally am clocking in at about 150 meg. I've run a cable out to the second building that we rent out for an Airbnb and people are happy to use the internet. They run Netflix and we don't notice any kind of speed drop here at home. So the connection and its speed, I think is awesome, especially if you remember I had four meg before. So 150 meg, absolutely awesome. Now, before I put the dish on the roof, the, the connection was dropping occasionally. Every now and then, I do still get the occasional dropped connection. I have an accountability group. We meet every couple of weeks on Zoom. And generally, we, we meet for an hour and probably half half of the time, I'll drop once during that call for about five, five seconds, maybe 10 seconds. Now, my wife, Jeannie, is on Zoom a lot during the day and that's never happened to her. So I can't be 100% sure it's the Starlink. It may be something with my computer. It may be because I'm on the other side of the house to the router. But also there is one thing, and that is that SpaceX specifically say in the installation instructions, if you've got a tree next to your roof, don't put the dish there. I had no choice about where I put the dish and we have got a pretty large tree fairly close to the roof. So it may be that every now and then the satellite flies past at an angle that means that the tree is blocking the connection because it only happens for a short time and it's not even enough for me to lose connection with zoom all altogether i just freeze for about five seconds so if you are installing the dish make sure that you you put it in a, a space that gives you as much open space as possible starlink do provide a kind of a giant pole that you can install the dish on that wasn't happening at our place and i'm quite happy with the dish and i'm perfectly happy to every now and then freeze in Zoom. Like I say, this, this hasn't happened to Jeannie at all and she's on Zoom a lot. So it, I can't definitely put it down to Starlink. The other thing is the lag. Now, when I first connected, I got a ping of something like 22 milliseconds and that happens often. However, when I checked it yesterday in advance of doing this video, I was getting about 40 milliseconds. So. I think there might be a contention ratio thing here. More and more people in the UK are getting Starlink. It may be that we're all sharing a satellite and it may be that things are slow. It may also depend on where the satellite is. Sometimes the satellite's gonna be right above the head. Sometimes it's gonna be miles and miles away and that's gonna affect the ping. The freezing also might make a difference if you're a gamer. The other issue, and this is quite recent, is that Starlink have recently announced they're gonna cap bandwidth 
uh, at 1.5 terabyte per month. So if you're moving huge files around, then that might be an issue. That's not an issue for me. I'm not going to get anywhere near that kind of bandwidth per month. Someone on Reddit said that that was something like 84 hours of Netflix 4K per month. That's about three hours a day just under. For me, one and a half terabytes is plenty. But if you're working with videos or large files, that could be a deal breaker for you. But all in all, for me, Starlink, it's staying. I've cancelled my broadband connection and I don't see myself going back. There's one other really cool thing that SpaceX have done, and that is without telling me, they've actually reduced my monthly fee. Who does that nowadays? So I was paying £85 a month, and they all of a sudden reduced it down to £79 a month. It's still a lot for the average residential user, but we're working from home a lot, and 4 meg was just a no-go for me. So for me, £85 was a no-brainer, £79, even better. I was really astounded when they did that, because they didn't need to. No one was complaining about the price of Starlink. They just obviously just realised they could they could deliver it at, at that price so did so in summary for me starlink has been the game changer i hoped it would be 150 meg average connection the odd dropout but it's very rare a tiny bit of lag but it's not noticeable for me and most of the time you know we're hitting 200 meg with a 22 millisecond ping which is just awesome I can move files around, I can work from home, I can work on the servers, I can send files, do everything I need to do and have those all important Zoom meetings, which was really difficult to do from home. So if you're considering getting SpaceX Starlink, if you're in the countryside, it's a no brainer. I would say if you're in the city or a large town and you've got fibre, it's probably going to be more reliable. I imagine that the speeds of fibre are going to continue to increase over time. That's probably a connection, but out in the countryside, yeah, absolutely awesome. OK, I hope that's been helpful. I know a few of you have asked for that video. So any other questions you've got, chuck them in the comments below and I'll be really happy to, to share my experience. Hope that's been useful. Take care.